with. <laughs> hey, welcome back, tennis fans. It's the final of the US Open. We've got Coco Goff against Arena Sabalenka. That's right, two epic semi finals. One had a massive delay in the middle, and the other one, they came back from the depths of despair to get into their first ever US Open final. This is going to be exciting because they're both going to be playing their first ever US Open final as well. We've got the American that I predicted to win the whole thing. She's one match away, JG. Yeah, and no disrespect to Mukova, but it's so good that Coco Goff's in the final. I think it's going to draw so many more numbers. And everyone now is excited for this matchup. This is the 2023 US Open final. Coco Goff on my left and on the right, Arina Sabalenka, the big hit in world number one now. Of course, Eagles lost her world number one status. And this, I think, is going to be a really, really tough one to call. We've got Coco Goff coming into this in great form. She's yeah. just won Cincinnati. She's playing some of her best tennis. She's refound confidence in the forehand again. And she's got the whole crowd behind her. Sabalenka. Seems to be going through the draw extremely easily. And now she's shown a different side to her game in that semi-final against Madison Keys. For once, it wasn't easy. And she's had to face a lot of adversity. She had the wobble, which we both anticipated. It was yeah. obvious. Uh, Sabalenka was never going to win that one straight set. There was going to be a wobble. And it meant that there was a bagel in the first set. And she was down also 5-3 in the second. She come back. She had an argument with her box. She threw a racket at them. Um, it was all a bit wild, but come through in two tie breaks after that. And she's shown another side to her game. We are set for a fantastic final. And this is me and Ben's preview of that final. We're going to give a prediction towards the end. Make sure, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. And if you're watching this on the day of the final, we will be live with play-by-play -play commentary very very soon so don't go anywhere yeah definitely oh, i mean i'm so excited this is the final that a lot of people were sort of building up towards coco goff i mean i was covering the match with you last night and i'm gonna say i didn't think that the match was the highest level for the for the like first i'd say set and a bit but yeah. I feel that then it got disrupted. I feel that Coco was definitely the better player, but the yeah. level still wasn't that high because they both looked a little bit nervous, Muck of them more so. And then Coco, her nerves came in when she was 5-1 up and then it allowed Muck of her back into the first set. It did worry me a little bit because I've not seen that side of Coco yet in this tournament. Uh, but she did turn it around. She obviously had six, I believe it was, match points and managed to get it done still. She didn't let that get into her own head and playing with confidence up until she was uh, announced as the victor and now through to her first ever US Open final, which is the storyline I, I was hoping we'd get from her in her young career. She's still a teenager and she has the potential now to sort of make a bit of history for herself. Like this, she even came out and said that the pressure that she's felt before was much more like it was, it was too hot, like tough to take. Like really after that big Wimbledon performance, when she broke through, there was so much pressure on like the next U S open that she couldn't even enjoy it. And now she's finally enjoying it. And that's what I like to see about her on court. Now I've been saying it all the way through. I'm sure people are sick of hearing me say it. But that's the main takeaway. She's having fun. And now you see how different her tennis is. She she shores up in the big moments rather than flopping. Uh, and well played to her. It was still a tough match because of the nerves and the delay. But she came through. Flying Do you colors. feel the delay helped Coco Goff though? Because it disrupted. Mm. Mukova was growing into the match. Do you know what I mean? A little and bit. With but... her growing into the match, all the delay did was kind of reset everything. I know... Mukova took mm. this advantage like she always would do. She had a medical timeout. She left the court, come back. Um, she was always going to try and... But I don't think that actually was her best thing, to, best tactic for her. She probably wanted to keep going because she was actually growing into it. And I feel without that stoppage, the second set, 
I made her favourite for. So I think Coco Goff can consider herself quite fortunate with what happened. Um, but you never know. This is just hearsay. Yeah, That didn't play out like that. Coco Goff into the final. Let's go through some tweets. Definitely. Yeah, it was straight sets, as we know. And let's have a look at her road to the final. This is yeah. um, the IBM. And this is uses AI. AI, Ben. We've got yeah. the IBM AI draw analysis. IBM seem to be doing this with a lot of the tournaments. They had a big uh, contract with Wimbledon to provide artificial intelligence uh, on the draw. And you can see just whereabouts that is. It's in, in the middle between favourable and neutral. So it's been a really good draw let's be honest yeah um it's not been a difficult draw at all she's had siegeman first round who was very slow quote coco goff and dreva's round two mertens in round three who's always a bit weak wasniaki just come back to tour ostapenko who didn't have much rest uh and mukova who didn't turn up in the semi-finals and the, the occasion got to her not been bad at all has it I don't know. I'm going to play devil's advocate and I'm going to say you're being a bit harsh there on the level of competition. I think you can only beat who's put in front of you. I think the qualifier, Sie Siegeman, is sometimes a little bit tricky and I think it was just a bit of nerves from Coco in the first match because all the expectations, she's won two tournaments coming in. Everyone expects her to beat a qualifier, so she struggled a little bit. The Mila Andreeva one, super impressive. Expected her to beat her. She beat her recently. She beat her again comfortably. The Mertens one, I know she's a bit flaky, but she did actually take it to Coco Goff and actually played some of the best tennis I've seen Mertens play in. Do you not think match. this is just highlighting maybe it's not been great for Coco Goff? I don't think it's mainly. It's, I think you're look. This is listen. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. I think you're painting this to be. Oh, it's been quite tough. I just don't think. I think it's been very easy. But she's not performed great in a lot of the matches. That's why she's dropped sets and she's had spells where she's wobbled and she's come back in a third and played great, brilliant tennis. I think she's been very inconsistent throughout this. And someone of a little bit more consistency would have walked this draw I based disagree. off their names. No, I disagree with you there. Uh, I, the Mertens match, I watched that full match and there was that wasn't the reason she dropped the set. Mertens just played crazy high level for a set and that actually beat. Coco Goff was uh, was Niaki or Vozniaki exactly the same. She she's been playing in a fantastic tournament. It just took Coco to come through in the third and prove her dominance. The Ostapenko won fair enough. It was a bit of a nothing match. She just played her game and Ostapenko was terrible. Anyone would have beaten Ostapenko in that quarter final yeah, I mean, it was without awful. the break. Mukova, I think she could have played a lot better. I'm not that there's no ifs or buts about it. She'll be the most disappointed out of everybody after that performance. That was go five one up. <laughs> yeah, she went five one up, Coco there, and I think Mukova. She didn't start playing until the seventh game, so it was just. It's true. Like, yeah. How do you expect to win a semi final? I mean, that break, like you said, it may have aided her, uh, Mukova. Yeah. It may have aided Goff. Not sure, really. Uh, I feel that Goff held her serve early in the second set, and I thought, oh, she's back again but it's hard to tell like you said anyway moving on to the next one because we know somebody who was watching there and it was Naomi Osaka was there in the crowd what did she have to say about Naomi she said I didn't notice she was sitting here till now thanks for coming uh, Naomi I remember the moment we had on on this court three years ago it meant a lot to me so excited to have you back on tour hopefully I get to meet your daughter and I think they've had a few matches at the US Open. I remember it being on the Breakpoint uh, documentary on Netflix. They covered some of them in detail. And yeah. she's got a lot of admiration and respect for uh, Naomi Osaka. For those who don't know, she will be returning to tour next year. She will be playing the Australian Open. Yeah. And she also plans to play more tournaments than she ever did before. So could be great. Um, she's not sure what level she's going to be start of the year, but hoping to peak come the end of the year. And I think, based off what she's saying, she's targeting the US Open, as a, as a possible event she can win at uh, Naomi Osaka. That's the way she's going into it. So let's wait and see on that. She Definitely. was in the crowd. Um, I don't didn't see her daughter at all. I think she's still pretty young. Only just yeah. giving birth, so probably at home. Um, but yeah, great to see Osaka back out again. And Coco Goff had a lot of respect for her. Yeah, definitely. Two-time US Open champion. Um, obviously has played her four times and hasn't 
two two head to head against Osaka. Yeah. So good one matches, of, actually. yeah, brilliant matches, and I feel that they're only going to get better and better that the older Coco gets. Speaking about families. Ah, Coco's parents, they've been sort of the talk of the tournament and especially their dad as well. The mum's always there and enthusiastic, but the dad has a different sort of approach to each of the matches, I've noticed. Some of them he disappears and you won't see him. Some of them he's in the box. Some of them he's somewhere else, completely different, in a, in a suite somewhere, just uh, trying to relax and not get too like irate during some of these points. But I feel like must have had a little bit of weight off his shoulders during the Ostapenko one and probably during the Mukova one as well. Straight sets wins. Can't ask for much more from your daughter, can you? Yeah, I find it funny that they never sit together, Coco's <laughs> mum and dad. Um, I'm, as far as I'm aware, they're still together. I don't think there's like the, they're separated at all. They no. just they sit separately because the dad's nerves, I think, is a lot worse than the mum's nerves. Yeah, And he has to walk around throughout. And he can't be too much in the firing zone. I think it's a bit too much heat down there in the player's box, right court side. The player looks to you a lot. And I think he likes to be a little bit um, in the background. And Mm. yeah, clearly you can see by some of his antics throughout his whole career, how he struggles to watch at times. You can see looking for his hands, walking around, nervous and very animated when she does a good point at times. So, it is a bit of a mood and I'm fascinated to see how they're going to be in the final. I can only imagine that being intensified. This, of course, is not her first Grand Slam final, but it is the first at the US Open. Yeah. And him not being in the box, very uh, admirable of him as well. To Because I think in this sort of situation, when you look to your box, like you were saying, after every big point or when you're struggling, you don't want to see like your dad there like I was going to say pulling his hair out, but I feel like he's had a whole, a whole uh, 19 I years. I say that to his face, Ben. Yeah, exactly. But I, I think he would be just there, just like with his head in his hands, just going like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. And she wants to look there for confidence. She doesn't want to look there for someone going, oh my God, no. Well, probably press her out more. Yeah, exactly. So she sees Brad Gilbert. She can have a little back and forth with him. That's fine. But the, I think the the mum, she's always just there, just giving encouragement. The dad's just probably just too much, just needs to just be on his own somewhere else watching. As long as they've I got think, it I all... think that would be me as a tennis parent, by the way. I feel like I would be most like Coco's <laughs> dad, the mum. I would probably be unbearable. I feel like I would have to be uh, moved away. He'd probably be like one of those. I mean, Stefano uh, Sissipas should probably take note and think maybe move his dad away because I feel like he doesn't he does more harm than good sometimes exactly right so that's well we've seen dads or parents who do get too involved that's the problem and it can be a negative impact on the player on the court so i feel coco's got the right blend right now don't mess it up Uh, we've got one more match keep it as it is and hopefully she can get the result that she so desperately wants but obviously we had the delay the massive delay an hour long nearly about 50 minutes 49. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, who's splitting hairs? Uh, (laughs) And some guy glued himself to the floor. That was uh, apparently the news. And uh, obviously refused to leave because he was glued to the floor. But Coco had some actually nice words to say about this in her post match press conference. And I thought it was actually very interesting to hear how she was going to handle this situation because this is a political thing. And she dealt with it really well, I thought. I thought. Bearing in mind, she's just won the match and she's speaking about it. If she'd yeah. have lost the match after that, I'm sure she'd have given a completely different answer. <laughs> I don't care who you are. I don't care how respected you are in the media and how you come across. Whoever, if anyone loses after something happening, for them instantly, it's natural instinct for your mind to go to that and be a cause as to why you lost. Yeah. Um. Even during the match, if things start to go badly and you start to lose that set and then in the third, she's down a break, she's going to be thinking about, if only I didn't have that break, I think I'd have been all right. So that's just psychology. That's how it works. Of course, she won, so she's going to be a little bit more positive about uh, the whole thing. And she said, I believe in climate change. I don't know exactly what they were protesting. We know it was fossil fuels. That's what it was on the T-shirts. And I 100% believe there are things we we could do better. Would I prefer it not happening in my match? 100%. 
It is what it is. Moments like this are history-defining moments. I wasn't pissed at the protesters. I always speak about preaching what you believe in. It was done in a peaceful way. I can't get too mad at it. If that's what they feel they needed to do it to get their voices heard, I can't really get upset at it. And she's someone who I feel can be a very political player. She is someone who does speak about a lot of um, big subjects in the media. She's always obviously been very vocal about the sort of the BLM movement and other policies and politics in America, um, which is quite admirable really for someone of her age to be able to do that and articulate herself so well. And I feel like it would be a hypocrite of her to say that people shouldn't protest what they believe in when she does the same thing of the things she believes in and i do think my thoughts on the whole thing is i do feel like we do have a climate issue at the moment and often when i see these things happening obviously the the initial impression from everyone is how angry they are and i do agree with the fact that i think they do things in the wrong way and all they're doing is really losing people towards the cause of course i'm referring to sort of the uh, the Just Stop Oil campaign yeah. in the UK at the moment, where they're interrupting a lot of big sporting events. We saw it at Wimbledon with the what was it the was that confetti on that confetti and the what's it called the puzzle set thrown up oh, in the yeah. air. That's it. The Wimbledon puzzle set. But I do actually agree that they have a cause, and I don't think they are being heard. And at the end of the day, it's working because they are being spoken about. I just don't like the way they're doing it and the disruption it's causing to everyday people trying to get to work when they're blocking roads and things like that. But maybe we all should be thinking about what, why they're having to go to these extreme lengths. And I do think they've got a point a lot of the time, and I think things need to change. I don't think the government are handling it too well. And I just want to be able to use my very small uh, platform to say we need to do more for the climate. And I think the way we're going is in... in in a bad way and if we can all be very mindful of that then that's great yeah it's one of those things that i don't feel that i'm educated enough on to give a very good opinion but i i believe that climate change is a real thing the severity of it i don't know because i'm not a scientist and i'll have to listen to a lot of different podcasts and a lot of different professionals before I can make a decision on it. So I'm going to, well, I'm just going to have to say, I don't disagree that there's a problem, but how, how severe it is and if it warrants this type of action and protest, maybe it does, not sure, but I don't think it, it changed the result of the match. I feel that Coco Goff would have won it. It may have, Uh, have, maybe, um, maybe was growing. Maybe. Well, we'll never know. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. On to the next one. Coco Goff will return to the WTA top five after the US Open. She'll be fifth if she loses the final. She'll be third if she wins. Oh. Uh, well, that's pretty big, isn't it? So that is her overtaking Rebecca, I would assume. And the significance of this is we've got kind of a big three in the women's tennis. So we've got um, Iga Sabalenka and Rabakina. Coco yep. Goff now forging her way into that big three in the rankings anyway, uh, if she wins. But still, top five is incredible. Well done to her. That is an amazing achievement. And she's now won her last 11 matches and her last 15 in the United States. So great run of form. If she wins, she'll go third. Yeah, I mean, it's, she'll overtake uh, fellow American Jessica Pagula. Oh, so not Rebecca now. Well, Rebecca is fourth at the moment, so she will overtake her as well. So she was on to Jabir's fifth at the moment, so she'll be able to leapfrog all of those three and then tuck in just behind Iga, who will be in number two come the end of the tournament. And I Sabo, know in the so. live rankings this year, that is the big three. So I think I'm getting mixed up with that because the live rankings, the I race. feel like we've got Iga, Saba, and yeah, the race, the race two. Where, is, where are they going this year? Yeah, they're, they're going to Guadalajara. Cancun. 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 Yeah. So, oh, is that not next yeah. year to Cancun? 
Is it? Maybe. Yeah, maybe it's next year. Sorry. Yeah. I, it's, I think it was Texas last year, but I don't know if that didn't go very well. I know well Saudi Arabia are desperate to get it. So oh, they've offered God. like the biggest contract you could ever oh, see. So that's, another, that's something to consider. Saudi Arabia and tennis. Everything's going to be. Should we just move to Saudi Arabia? It seems like every sport will be there soon and no one will need Probably to. be quite good there. You're going to live in the line? <laughs> I don't know. It might be n- nice weather. Probably a bit too hot. It's too hot for me. That's for sure. Right. So that's Coco and her match. Um, we've given our thoughts on it. Let's move on to the other semi final, which was the one that came up Crazy. afterwards and topsy turvy semi final. And your potential finalist, Madison Keys, was so, so close, wasn't she, JG? But unfortunately, she couldn't get it over the line from this position. And here it is six yeah. love. 5-3 and love 15 on the Sabalenka serve. Three points away. I mean, she had it won, Madison Key. She had Sabalenka exactly where she wanted. It was a late match in the UK, so I've only been able to watch the highlights. And Key's just... <sighs> no. I, I don't know. I don't have the words for it. It's just... She was so close. So, so close. This is going to be a crushing loss. I think we are going to see... This is one of them ones where Keys. I don't think, is going to be the same for the next few matches. Hopefully she can bounce back. She's been playing amazing tennis. She took the match to Saba like I thought she would. Bageled her in the first set. I didn't expect it to be that comfortable, but I thought she no. was going to win this one. And yeah, credit to Sabalenka. She fought. She stood in there. She held serve at this situation where I think a previous version of Saba would have folded here. Um, yep. She lost her mind many times. I don't know if you want to show the video of her throwing the racket at the box. Have you got the um, video on there as well? Yeah, I sent that to you. Let's and just have a quick look. One sec. It Go was on. just... She just did so well to hold on. Couldn't find her first serve at times. And then break Madison Keys back when it matters. And from that moment on, when she was able to win the really tight tie break, she was then my favourite for the third set. And I thought Keys was going to be a little bit rattled. Um... And that's exactly what happened. You can yeah, see here good. the videos, yeah, speaking to her box. She was shouting at them. She threw that racket. They gave her another racket and she threw the other one in a very <laughs> weird attempt. Look, I don't know if you <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so she threw it to there and it didn't quite make it. It got, oh, he tried to get it, but then missed it. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't like she tried again after that, but no. she, she, her head was gone. She, she looked down and out and she come back. So... I think it's so important for Sabalenka to be able to do that because she's now going into the final, I think, with that under her, under her sleeve. Like, she can lose that first set against Coco Golf and be down in the second and she can start to still believe in herself because with Sabalenka, I don't really think it matters what position she's in. No. Because technically and ability-wise, she's better than so many other players. She's got more power than everyone times about 1.5. and. Yep. I think that in itself makes her unplayable. So a bit like Ostapenko and everything's going amazing, she's unplayable. Sabalenka's a little bit more, a lot more consistent. And she also has that Ostapenko ability to blow people off the court. So even if she is down, if she can just find herself and regain that confidence and find the, the shots again, she can win from any position. And I think that's an important skill to take into the final for her. Most definitely. And the one thing that she's managed to achieve uh, in winning this match, it, which I think is super important, is the fact that it's a semi-final and we know that in semi-finals, sometimes she throws it away. She's had, what, one, exactly. two, three, four, five. And this was another opportunity for her to throw it away, but she didn't. She suddenly dug in and we saw something different to what we saw at Wimbledon, what we saw at the French Open, where she just lost the plot and lost the match, and then in an instant, it all unraveled. It seemed like it was the opposite in this match. It all came good, and then she dug in in big moments, and two tie breaks in a row. I mean, it doesn't get much tougher than that to yeah. fight through, and credit to Madison Keys for not completely, like, just capitulating and just thinking, oh, no, uh, I lost the match in that second set, because she still gave it a good go in the third. I'll tell you what was so funny. In the third set tie break, I don't know if you've seen this, she was 7-3 up and she dropped her racket and celebrated thinking she'd won. 
Oh no. She'd done the whole like I've just won the match and then it's dawned on her, oh snap, I've not actually won the match. I've got in the final, I've got to get to ten. That's so that could have been good. another thing that would have crumbled her in the past, but I feel like she's done this before. I feel like I remember watching her celebrate when she got to seven once before. She clearly just can't remember in a first set that she needs a... to get to ten if it goes tie break. That's a bit crazy, isn't it? I mean, but in the I can understand That's the world the heat... number one. In the heat of a moment, you're sort of just focused on those points and then you, you're you thinking I'm in a tie break and you completely forget that you're in a slam, probably. But I, I, I'll let her off for that one. I mean, it's just... I uh... thought he was going to do a news video. World number one forgets tennis rules. <laughs> We've seen so many, so many of these players do it, though. It's not the first person to have done it and I'm sure it won't be the last. It would definitely so. be you if you was pro. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I wouldn't even know what part of the tie break we were in. Um, this is her. Oh, look at the little line. So the line's oh. more towards neutral than what it was for Coco Goff. So she's had a harder draw based off the IBM artificial intelligence anal draw analysis than Coco Goff. Hmm. Interesting. Only slightly, though. Coco Goff was one of. Uh, did she have one of. The, was it the easiest draw? But in when we came into this tournament, I remember seeing the top five and she was definitely in there for Coco. Yeah, it probably was. That's why you picked her. It would make sense. Nah, I was pick picked her years before. <laughs> so this was her uh, road and I'd say the first three rounds expected her to win all of them. Sanevska, Burridge, Burrell, Kasatkina, different type of player, more of a, less power, more work around the court, but you're just going to be running for days against Saba with those big power shots. Kim Win Jen, I mean, first quarter final was a little bit disappointing, I have to say. Deer um, in headlights. Yeah. Jen. I mean, that was ideal, really, for, for Saba. Just somebody that's not got any experience at that level. And then Keys, I mean, it doesn't get much closer, to be honest. She's been to the final before. And in America... She had all the crowd against her as well. So I think she's that was the key one. Excuse the pun. <laughs> but that was the key victory. Definitely. Yeah, and I'm so impressed she was able to beat Keys. I didn't think it was going to happen. I thought Keys had her before the match and even at 6-love, 5-3. She, I mean, I'm so upset really. And I think it's going to destroy Keys because I wanted to see her make that final. We could have had an All-American final and we was very close to getting one. Uh, but unfortunately for that, it's a semi-final exit, but it was so tight. I think that was, for sure, the toughest match of Sabalenka's run by a long way. Yeah. Is the final going to be tougher? Um, to well, that's the question. I know that you sent over a Madison Keys uh, tweet as well. Yeah, we could, should speak about it because yeah. she only had two minutes of her post-match press conference. Sad. She was in tears and... Yeah, sport can be very cruel at times. And I've said it at the start of the video, I'll say it again. I think it is going to take some time for her to come back from this loss when they're that close. And she's just in touching sort of range from a final and you don't get it. It's not easy. Yeah, totally agree with that. Um, the head-to-head -head, uh, between these two players, obviously Coco Goff. Uh, and Arena Sabalenka. They've played five times before, and Coco leads 3 2 on the head to head, which is. Tell us about not... some of the matches. Yeah, okay. Let's. Uh, I'll go through some of the matches. I might even be able to just bring the match up. I was just going to just do a quick screenshot and then I'll just pop them up on the screen for us. And that way we don't have to see little pop ups coming up. So here we go. Let's see if you can see those. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the first time they ever played, that was back in 2020. Goff won. That was in Lexington. Um, 2020 again, they played a couple of months later in Ostrava. That's indoor hard. Sabalenka won. So then we got Clay. Are you Rome. sure Sabalenka won? Looks like Coco Goff won there. Mm. Oh, no, it's because she's bold. Okay, understood. Yeah. Yeah, it's Sorry, done, in, done in a weird way. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, Sabalenka was the victor on the indoor hard court, their only indoor hard court match. Coco's won their only clay court match in Rome in straight sets. And then two outdoor hard matches. We had Toronto, and we the latest one is Sabalenka at Indian Wells, who actually bageled Coco got there. 
Yeah, and I would uh, read most most into um, the one this year. I think it was, of course, it makes sense to look at the one this year. It was at Indian Wells in America, and she got demolished. Six four six love, and I think that shows a lot um, in the way that Sabalenka should be the big favourite. And I'm going to just confirm that now because I'm interested to see what the bookmaker, yeah. it, bookmakers have this final to be. But before I look. I would say it should be 1.36 Sabalenka. That's how I that's how I see. Go I on, think then. she is a big favorite, but they'll probably have 1.5. What that's do you think? Fine. No, it's 1.73 that's... Sabalenka. I think wow. that's great odds. Coco Goff at evens at twos. So yeah, and... the, the book can see this one quite close with Sabba just the favorite. I see her as a bigger favorite than that. Hmm. I mean, that's it's pretty close. I I think the the way that Goff went through and the way that Saba went through has affected those odds, to be honest. And I feel that they saw Saba go through in three, nearly lose her semi final, and Coco through in straight sets again. They're sort of shying towards that more than looking at past head to head matches. I don't think you can judge Coco based upon how she was back uh when when were they playing Indy Wells? March? Yeah, I don't think you can judge her on how she was in March because since since then she had couldn't barely string back to back wins together on Clay. She had a decent enough French open, went out to Eager, and then she won Washington, she won Cincinnati, and now she's uh getting to the final of the US Open. The only one where she lost was to Pagula. That's her only loss in the last, what, four, in four tournaments. And that was in three sets. And Pagula won in Montreal. So she's yeah, in maybe you've got a point form. and she's more informed now. But then seeing as that was so one-sided, I think all that's going to do is just make it less one-sided, but still I favour Sabalenka. And I know you're going big on the fact that you've pred- predicted Coco <laughs> and probably you're doubling down. But... I think Sabalenka is the force you cannot you cannot deny. She is just if she plays dangerous. her best tennis and I she's, feel that you gotta remember yeah. Grand Slam, she's already won one this year on hard courts. If she plays her best tennis, there's not many people who can stop her, Saba. That's the problem. She's so powerful. Well, my question to you is if Sabalenka and um Ostapenko played and they both played their best tennis, who would win? my word what a question i love it uh that should have been the next uh tennis shootout <laughs> <laughs> what a difficult question to uh to answer there's probably well, don't, I, don't think, I don't think i don't think we can answer it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put it to the live to not the live tax we're not live i'm gonna put it to the comment section answer this one at home if you can because it's a fascinating one who would win in a tennis match played on a hard court in america and the condition, the, the the stipulations are they're both playing their best tennis. So we've got Ostapenko playing her best, Sabalenka playing her best. Who would win that match, and what would be the score? Let us know in the comments section below. If this sways you, they've played twice before. And there was a two zero head to head lead for Sabalenka, but don't know if Ostapenko might have been playing her best that day. <laughs> so well, I don't know how much we can look into that. Right, I think we should get on to our predictions for this one anyway. Obviously. Okay, one second, because it's prediction time. Oh, no. Here we go. US Open 2023 final. Coco Goff, Sabalenka. How do you see this one going, Ben? Right, we're going to have to set the scene. Um the crowd, they all get in to the stadium on time for the final, not like Coco Goff semi-final. And we have a packed crowd. You can hear the air, like it's full of tension. Everyone expecting her to come out. She comes out. She looks confident. Saba comes out. She looks maybe slightly more nervous. She can feel all the eyes on her. She can sense that everyone wants her to lose. And... I think this match starts off fast. I think we see errors from Saba. I think Coco comes out the traps quicker and gets an early break. And then we get all the way to the end of the first set. I think she gets broken back. And I think the first set goes to a tie break. And I think Saba takes the tie break. 
in the first set and the crowd are in disarray. But then there's a toilet break. Coco Goff goes off. She stares in the mirror. She says, this is your time. You need to come back out there and start fighting. She comes she meets out. Meets Djokovic she... in the toilet for a potion. <laughs> Maybe she does. <laughs> Steph Stad's in there as well for some reason. I don't know what he did in there. Uh, but yeah, she comes back out on court. I feel it gets to about 3-3 in the second set. There's a long rally. It goes for about 25 shots. Coco, big winner celebrates it gets the crowd going she gets a break and then she goes on and takes the second set and then we're into the third shootout and i think that it's gonna be coco six four final set claims the us open and her first ever grand slam title well, if you get that right, I mean, hopefully you enter the lottery as well because it's very, <laughs> very specific there to the T. Um, but I understand your logic. I understand why you've gone for that and your story behind the final. My story is a very different one to yours. Oh, no. And it will consist of the first set, Sabalenka playing some good tennis and Coco Goff making a lot of errors. The crowd's going to be very loud and she's going to be a bit nervous and struggle and the forehand's going to be sloppy. There's going to be unforced errors galore. And I think Sabalenka will just overpower her and take that first set 6-2. The second set, however, I see being a very close affair and a very tense one because Coco started playing a little bit better. Sabalenka started realising she's one set away from winning the title and she's going to be nervous. Sabalenka, however, will be up a break pretty much the whole of the second set until... We get to 5-3 or 5-4. Whatever, either one of them. Well, it depends on who serves first. <laughs> and then Sabalenka will get broken in crazy fashion. It might be a double fault to get broken on the last point. Coco Goff will then be back. She'll be playing great. She'll hold to love. Um, she'll put pressure on the Saba serve again. Saba might be able to just get it over the line. And we're going to end up going to a second set tie break. No matter what. It's going to happen. It's going to be tense. Coco Goff's going to be in the lead in that tie break. It's going to be neck and neck. And I think Sabalenka is going to win it 10-8 uh, in the tie break and winning straight sets and have another Grand Slam title, the second of the year. I'm predicting Sabalenka to win this final in straight sets. 6-2, 7-6. Wow. I mean, an emotional roller coaster for everybody <laughs> involved. <laughs> <laughs> I like these. It's uh, never going to be straightforward, no. But. Please let us know in the comment section if you want to give us a full description of how you think the final is going to go. We will read through all of them. And when we get to the live final, we will read some of them out during the live final when we're covering it as well. Just because it's going to be entertaining. I want to, before we go live, I want to read out people's predictions. Yeah, and also let us know whose prediction you agree with more, mine or Ben's. Yeah. Um, but there we go. You've heard what we've had to say. Make sure to join us for the live play-by-play. -play. It will be, if you're watching this on the day of the final, very soon. Me and Ben are going to be there covering every single minute of the action. If not, this is our preview. Please share it around with your friends. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. And tomorrow, we'll be bringing you a men's final preview. That could be Djokovic, Alcaraz, might be Shelton in there. Let's wait and see. Might even be Shelton Medvedev. Well, that'd be a that'd be a turn up for the books. But of course, semi final action tonight on the men's. We, me and Ben will be live from eight eight o'clock UK time. I believe it's sort of three PM US time for Djokovic, Ben, Shelton. But thanks everyone for joining. Thanks for being with us most of this tournament with these daily podcasts. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you very soon. Come on, go, go. Come on, Sava.